This video is fourth in a series on creating a simple JSON service that can be consumed by many clients. In our case, we're going to consume it with an Android client. So in the first video, we designed the database schema. In the second video, we created the schema. In the third video, we, uh, we created an initial Perl script. In this video, we're going to continue to refine that Perl script and we're going to try to get it to select from a database. First, one mistake I noticed that I've made in the table is I've set every column to be not null. Uh, that would be a problem because some of these should be nullable, like purge date, for instance. So I'm going to select and say change, and I'm just going to quickly change this and say, uh, say that it, it does not need to be null. Okay. Okay, do some quick selection here. And then we're going to choose save. Okay, and structure, uh, that looks a lot better. Now, to select some data from this, I need to have some seed data first. I need to have a little bit of data in here first. ID is automatically generated. Uh, so what I'm going to do for common name, I'm just going to create a couple records. We'll start with Southern Magnolia. Okay, Magnoliaceae. Okay, Magnolia, Grandiflora, uh, cultivar. We'll leave that alone. Notes: an excellent tree found worldwide. Size minimum: we'll say 30 feet. Uh, size max: we'll say 60. Purge date: we'll leave null. Okay, common name. Uh, for the next one, we're going to say pawpaw. Family, Anonaceae, uh, genus, Asimina, species, Triloba. A cultivar we'll leave alone. An excellent tree with edible fruit. Native to Midwest USA. Minimum size will say 10 feet. Maximum size will say 30 feet. Uh, and then we're going to choose go. And the goal is to get these records saved. Looks like we have two rows inserted. Now we can browse this table by clicking on the Browse button, and we can see that we have two rows, so Southern Magnolia and Pawpaw. And we see it's given us a sample query. What I can do is I can choose Edit, and that will bring up a new window where I can edit the query. So I could say select star from plants where common name I see common name over here like now likes an important one because that will let us search uh, with a partial match it'll let us put part of a string in and find or put a string in and find uh, find entries that contain that string but maybe aren't exactly like that string so like single quote wild card which is the percent symbol and then let's see common name we have magnolia so I could say AGN, which is in Magnolia, wildcard, single quote. Okay, and I can choose go. And what this should return to me then is my Southern Magnolia. This is a good search that we can run. And so what it's going to be similar to is if I go to the plantplaces.com, the existing JSON feed that I have on there, you see here we have common equals red bud. Now you see if I put in red B, we're still going to get the same results because it is a like query. It is one that we only need to search for a part of a word. If I choose EDB, again, we're still going to get the same results. If I choose ED, we'll probably get a lot more results because there are a lot of plants that have the word ED in them. So what we have now is we have a query that we can run in our Perl script. So we simply need to add this to the Perl script, script along with the necessary uh, Perl things to actually run the query. So I go back to my Perl script. I did add a little uh, end HTML here. I go to my Perl script and I'm just going to go ahead and paste that query in and I'm going to comment it with the pound symbol so I remember that just so I know that it's, it's not part of the script just yet but uh, I can edit that later. So to run a query what I need to do is I need to connect. 
Okay, so I have used dBi here, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to define a variable called dBh. And so we say dBh equals uh, dBi connect, and notice that we have a, a kind of like a, a dash and then a greater than symbol and then connect. Then we have our database connection information. So we're connecting to MySQL. We are connecting to the uh, database under JonesBR, which is my username, uh, Jones BR again, which is the database schema. If we take a look at MySQL, oops, wrong one. And uh, so we see this is my Jones BR, and then plants is the table. So you see uh, FSH, UC file space, UC EDU, Jones BR, and then plants. Uh, that's where we're connecting. So I provide it with some database information. And then I also provide my uh, password for this database as the last argument. And this is a password that I will change soon. So that's not going to be the password that's going to go into production, naturally. But it's a temporary password that I can use just to test things out. And I save. Oops. Cancel that one. And cancel that. And I choose save. OK. So the syntax is DBI, MySQL, and then the database name. And the database name is uh, to, uh, for it you see it is our bearcat ID which is Jones BR uh, and then login which is also the bearcat ID and then the password it you see this is not our central login password uh, this is a password that's specifically generated for MySQL it's not the same password you use to get into email or anything like that optionally you could also put local host on, on here or the port where uh, sorry the uh, domain where you're database is running. So that's an optional additional element that we can add. Okay, so we start with that. If you're not using this at UC, your web host will have these details or you should be able to ask your web host for these details. After we have DBH set up, uh, what we're going to do is prepare and execute our query. So I'll use this hard-coded query for the moment. Uh, I'm going to say uh, STH equals dollar sign, as that was dollar sign STH equals dollar sign DBH, and then we'll say prepare. Okay, and we need to pass a string in in parentheses. The string is what I have above, so I'm going to say, uh, I'm going to say my, uh, dollar sign, uh, let's say query if you want, equals. Uh, and then double quote, select star from plants or common name like ANG semicolon. I just have to be careful with my quotes here. Okay, uh, query equals select star from plants or common name like ANG. I don't need the single quotes around plants. I'm going to go ahead and remove that, just clean things up a little bit. Um, everything else looks good. In the land of Perl, the double quotes will take this entire string as one unit. So I'm going to take this dollar sign query, I'm going to pass that in as an argument to this STH equals DBH prepare query. And next I'm going to say dollar sign STH, uh, and then we're going to do dash and greater than, and then execute, which just tells it to execute this query. Okay, now we should get some results. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to say while, and this is a little bit interesting. What we need to do is make a list of columns that are coming back. So actually what I might do is I might change this query a little bit and put in a, some columns. So I have a known limited number of columns. Let's look at the table structure one more time. So table structure, we have ID, common name, family, genus, species, cultivar. The most important here are going to be ID, common name, genus, species, and maybe cultivar. So let me just put those in my select statement. Select ID, comma, common, name, comma, uh, and then genus, comma, species, comma, uh, sure, cultivar. Uh, we'll want to make sure those are spelled correctly because if they're not, we'll get an error on our SQL statement. So ID, common name, genus, species, cultivar. ID, common name, genus, species, and cultivar. We see those in our table. Okay. So this query is going to run, and in the while statement, it's going to iterate over the results. So we're going to say while, dollar sign ID, comma, 
dollar sign common underscore name comma dollar sign uh, genus comma dollar sign species comma dollar sign cultivar okay so what that's saying is as I run this query and I iterate over the results store each row uh, into each column of the row so each cell basically in this order ID goes to ID common name to common name genus to genus species to species cultivar to cultivar okay and then what we say is we say equals dollar sign sth dash greater than fetch row fetch row all one word lowercase now it looks like what I want to do is I want to put this entire unit in parentheses so I'm going to do while and then open and close the parentheses just like that so I put this entire query statement in parentheses and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to do open curly and close curly and this unit this open and close curly unit whatever I put in here is going to run once for each result that I get back from this query so what I can do is I can say print and one interesting thing about Perl is with a double quote with a double quoted string I can just paste in these dollar signs like this and Perl will go through as it sees the dollar sign it will interpret that know it's a variable and print out the value of that variable so this isn't JSON yet but we can at least verify that we're going to get some output and I will say this is the first time I've run this against a MySQL database at UC so we'll see how it goes so I'm going to save upload try it look for errors I might have a couple errors here that I have to fix fix the errors and then try again and I've uploaded the script and take a look sure enough it's given me results right off the bat that's not too bad all of that typing and I didn't make a mistake which I'm pretty happy about um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add one more row that would qualify for that query AGN that we see so the query that I hard coded here is AGN don't worry about the hard coding in the next video we're gonna see how we can actually parameterize this uh, from a form or or something like that so I've I've run uh, against the live plant places JSON feed and by the way this is a publicly available feed if it's something you would like to use in your own application plantplaces.com slash Perl slash mobile slash view plants JSON PL it's what I use on the live website uh, for the autocomplete here Bignonia so you see how it uh, you see how it auto completes um, and that's something that you're welcome to use as well if you need a source of JSON data uh, Echinacea okay so I put in Echinacea because AGN we see Echinacea purpurea magnus coneflower Echinacea purpurea magnus contains that AGN so I'm gonna go and add a new row I'm gonna choose insert and Echinacea just a minute uh, purpurea that's fine it's a common echinacea you probably hear about it's a member of the asteraceae family so astere uh, let's see asteraceae and we said uh, the one that we're looking at is going to be magnus coneflower that's the common name magnus coneflower so put it in okay echinacea C -A. okay purpurea an excellent plant for the landscape by the way um, anything else we need what's the cultivar Magnus okay so the cultivar is Magnus okay and I uh, don't need to uh, size men uh, echinacea is about uh, three feet four feet that's I mean it's it's just a flower maybe even two feet three feet might be more accurate choose go that adds it to the database now let's go back and run our query again which is hard-coded to AGN I'm gonna hit refresh and you see we have now two rows Southern Magnolia, Magnolia grandiflora, and uh, Magnus coneflower. 
control U will show us the raw data. So we still need to do a few more things. We still need to do a bit of formatting and we also need to make this parameter driven so that I can put in a parameter. This is the live feed, but for the one we're making, I need to be able to put in a parameter and vary the results based on that parameter. We'll go ahead and capture that in a separate video. Uh, this video is about the 15 minute mark, so we'll capture that in the next video. Thanks for watching, and I look forward to seeing you in the next.